Capital One here in Knoxville at Thompson Bowling Arena. It is the first round of the Oklahoma City Regional. Game one of our doubleheader, the 10 seed against the 7 seed as Creighton meets Syracuse. A little bit later on, the Lady Vols will be on their home floor as they will take on the 15th seeded Oral Roberts team. And the Lady Vols have never lost in the NCAA tournament in their home arena. The winner of our two games meet on Monday night. Coach Fortner will take us to the one-on-one -on -one for game one. Well, you're looking at Kayla Alexander. She's the all-time leading scorer in Syracuse women's basketball history. Has a tremendous inside presence for Syracuse. And Marissa Janning, the all-Missouri Valley freshman of the year. She does it all for this team from that point guard spot. Let's take a look at today's Capital One starting lineups. We will begin with the Creighton Blue Jays. And not only Janning has had a terrific year, but the junior in the front court, Sarah Nelson. Well, strong defensive presence inside, and they're going to need that today for the Blue Jays. And for Syracuse, Kayla Alexander, first team all Big East center, but Brittany Sykes, a McDonald's All-American and a freshman, has had a great year in the backcourt as well. Tremendous impact player for Syracuse this year. Syracuse and Creighton have never met in their school's histories. Syracuse, their first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2008 as Quentin Hilfman, their head coach, has tried to reshape the vision of this women's program. Obviously, their men's program needs no introduction. Cornelia Fondren, a little too strong off the glass, and the rebound falls to Ali Jensen. Tough man defense Syracuse is going to face today against Creighton. And Creighton needs to figure out how to attack this zone defense from Syracuse. Syracuse kind of known for some zone defense, right? I've heard tell that they play a little 2-3 zone up in Syracuse as Marissa Janning's first field goal attempts at air ball. Long distance three from Sarah Nelson won't go and a long rebound to Mackenzie Fuya. We're going to see a lot of three-point shots attempted by Creighton today, probably in the 30s, Bob. Another putback won't go for Alyssa Kampas. So four looks at the basket, first trip for Creighton. That's supposed to be the strength of Syracuse. They're a terrific rebounding team. And that was something that Jim Flannery was really worried about coming into today's game as Kayla Alexander draws the game's first foul. So she will go to the line. Jim Flannery in his 11th year, a Creighton grad, class of 87, and the winningest coach in program history, but really concerned about his team's lack of size inside and whether or not they would be able to rebound with Syracuse. Well, and it's a legitimate concern because Syracuse is a tremendous offensive rebounding team. You've got Kayla Alexander. She averages four O boards a game, but they, they get about 17 a game. They get 16 points off the O boards, Syracuse does. For the game's first points, scored by Kayla Alexander. You see this extended. Syracuse likes to extend this 2-3 zone, take time off the shot clock. Sometimes they'll up the tempo to, to look for steals. Three on the way from Janning. That comes up short. Another long rebound and another look for Creighton. From the corner, coming up short is Sarah Nelson. And it's run down by Lacey Hall. You know, last year against St. John's in their NCAA game, they, they fell behind early in that game but never gave up. Creighton will not give up. They are a tough, tough basketball team, and they will keep putting up that three ball. Quentin Hillsman leading Syracuse to postseason play five straight years. And the fourth year in a row that Syracuse has won at least 22 games. So this is the sixth year in a row that Syracuse has been in postseason play. But they're still looking for their first ever win in the NCAA tournament. Well, it's been since 2008 that they've played in the NCAA tournament. And this is their best, one of their best records in 25 years for their, their program. But you got to get that NCAA tournament win. That's an air ball that creates another offensive rebound. Mackenzie Fouillon puts back the miss from Jensen. And that's the first field goal of the game for either team. And we're tied early. Well, I'm sure Coach Hillsman's not pleased with their re the boxing out and the lack of rebounding by Syracuse right now. But these second shot opportunities, you cannot give Creighton that many looks. Line drive three comes up short for Lacey Hall. tries a three. That's off the mark. It's out of bounds, though, off Hall. So a chance for a defensive rebound for Syracuse. And they can't corral it. 
You know, one of the tough things about the long three ball is you get the long rebounds when that happens, and that, that seems some of that is happening, but you've got to still box out. You cannot give up these second opportunities to Creighton if you're Syracuse. Bouillon barely draws iron, and now a good box out by Carmen Tyson Thomas for Syracuse. Well, she got in the game early, didn't she, Carmen Tyson? Thomas, she's the Big East Sixth Man of the Year. Normally a starter last year, but has accepted her role coming off the bench and does a, a, a nice job. Blocking foul called on Camp House will put Hall at the line. And Syracuse, the strength that they have from a rebounding standpoint, but Creighton turning the tables on Syracuse through the first three and a half minutes. Well, they are. They're scrambling down there trying to go after those extra shot opportunities, and they have to, and Coach Flannery knows that. This team has to play hard for 40 minutes. And I'm not surprised they're still shooting the three ball. That's their game. They they put up threes, and eventually you have to think they're going to drop. Alexis Akinatiko comes on for the first time, replacing Alyssa Camphouse, as Camphouse just picked up her second foul. So the junior starting center for Creighton in foul trouble and on the bench. That's an early move for Jim Flannery. We have yet to play four total minutes, and already his main post threat on a team that really relies heavily on the three-point shot is on the bench with two fouls. Well, she gives them good size inside, so that definitely makes sets into their depth. Nice inside-out ball movement, but Allie Jensen not able to hit a wide-open three. Deflection, though. Nice job by Carly Tritz to knock it away. You know, it's a little bit typical of a first first round NCAA team. Both teams trying to find their footing and find the basket. Another miss inside. A Kinetico couldn't hit, and we'll step aside. These teams combining for one for 15 from the floor so far. A low scoring first four minutes. Right, guys they're not scared of you they're not scared of you they think they are supposed to win this game we got to come out guys we got to play guys and let's bring our good stuff today all right let's go quentin hillsman's pre-game talk to a syracuse orange bob shoes and nell fortner we have certainly seen a creighton team that early on as at least taking the fight to Syracuse on the offensive blast they've kept possessions alive they have nine more field goal attempts through the first 
four and a half minutes than Syracuse does. And six offensive rebounds. Another miss from three. That one won't go for Rachel Coffey, who's another microwave type player off the bench for Syracuse. Syracuse does a good job getting back in transition defense right there, stopping the layup and dropping back into their zone defenses. They've got to be careful not giving up too many of the good looks because the three ball will eventually fall for a good shooting three point team. Good hands by Alexander to get the takeaway. Wide open look for Coffey. There's the game's first three, and Syracuse extends their lead. We see Creighton really dropping down on Alexander. They're very concerned about her inside in the paint, so that leaving some open looks for the Syracuse three ball. A tie up, the possession arrow will keep it with Creighton. Right here, Bob, you see the point guard Carly Tritz dropping down right there and leaving Coffee wide open for the three. Very concerned about Alexander on that block. That's Nell Fortner, former coach at Purdue, former coach in the SEC at Auburn, gold medal winning head coach in the Olympics. I'm Bob Wischusen, and I really don't have much of a resume at all. So it's nice to sit next to you. Oh, come on, Bob. We know you played some driveway <laughs> basketball at some point. At best, only when they lowered the rims for me. Nerf. Akinatiko in the post, fades away, comes up with nothing. Rebounds, and that's a shot clock violation as the ball did not hit the rim. So it goes to Syracuse anyway. Shakir, Shakia Leary. Had the rebounds coming back in as Marissa Janning for the Blue Jays, replacing Akinatiko. So this is a really small group on the floor now for Creighton as the two main post players outside of Sarah Nelson are now on the bench for Creighton. It's four guards and Nelson. And Creighton's used to playing four guards. They played that most of the season this year until Akinatiko started getting her game going. And, but so right now, this isn't an uncomfortable lineup for, for Creighton. Brianna Butler replaces Brittany Sykes. So that's one McDonald's All-American in for the other. That last foul called on Jordan Garrison, her first. Tyson Thomas, too strong. down for Mackenzie Fuyon. That's the first triple for Creighton and makes it a one possession game. Well, you got to wonder if that opens up the door for Creighton. The, mirage, the barrage of three starting to go in. Wide open is Leary. She was almost surprised at how open she was. Leary's given Syracuse some good minutes this year when Kayla Alexander has gotten into foul trouble. She's a nice force to come off the bench for the arm. Inside out sets up Janet. She comes up short. And the one thing about the Syracuse zone, they are first in the Big East in their three-point field goal defense, holding people to 27%, and it's working for them today. Three on one here for the Blue Jays, and a terrific play by Coffey to reach up, knock the pass away, and now get the steal. Rachel Coffey through traffic, wide open, it's Butler. That was all Rachel Coffey gets the steal and the setup for Brianna Butler, and it's 10-5 Cuse. Well, that's what you do when you're a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school. Brianna Butler, just a very heralded senior last year, and it's hit the starting lineup with Brittany Sykes and made a difference for the Orange. Mackenzie Fuyon has two Creighton field goals. No one else for Creighton has a bucket. Fourth turnover for the Blue Jays, and now a blocking foul is called on Carly Tritz. What a great heads up play, just right there, quick hands by Coffey. She handles the ball in traffic because Sid Craig never gives up defending it. A nice long range three from Brianna Butler. So Coffey goes to the bench, as Creighton has now picked up 14 fouls. No fouls yet on Syracuse. Carmen Tyson Thomas back on the bench for the Cuse as well, as they are both very dangerous weapons that Quentin Hilsman brings off of the bench. And here's Fondren back in the game. 
Sykes checks back in. That's her first field goal attempt. That's no good. Leary an offensive rebound, but she hopped a bit trying to corral the loose ball, and she's called for traveling. That's the third Syracuse turnover. I'm impressed today by Creighton's inside defense. Their, their presence in there, they're doing a great job of, of doubling down and getting just making just surrounding post players, building a campfire in there around post players when they get the ball, keeping the ball out of there also. These are two teams that normally shoot better than 40% from the field. Creighton is two for 14 overall. Syracuse is two for nine. Is that just opening game, first round NCAA tournament jitters? You know, Bob, I really think some of that is opening round um, jitters. So I do expect both of these teams to settle in and start finding their game. One for 11 from three now for Creighton. Offensive foul calls on the dish off by Lacey Hall. We'll step aside. Syracuse and Creighton still trying to find their footing here in Knoxville. Carol Lawson, Carolyn Peck, you know, Maryland playing at home. The big story, though, Kara, is what Quinnipiac's doing in their first appearance in the tournament. Allen Cannon, three threes in the first half. Quinnipiac, if you don't know, now you know. They're up by five in College Park. Updating you other games. Central Michigan hanging tight against Oklahoma, down by four. And it's St. Joe's up by one. Let's go back to Bob and Nell in Knoxville. All right, Kevin, the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continuing. Syracuse with a five-point lead. These two teams would kill for a couple of threes to go down as they are a combined three for 16, shooting the three through the first eight-plus minutes. And now it's Creighton's go-to weapon. They are obviously a three-point heavy team. 11 of their first 15 field goal attempts, three-point attempts, but they're only one for 11. They're going to keep shooting them, though, Bob. And, and what I think they're facing right now is just the, the quickness of Syracuse being able to close out hard and strong on shooters. We just see a, a turnover, a steal right there. Brit uh, Brittany Sykes gets in, in the passing lane, and that's what Creighton's having to deal with right now. Largest lead for Syracuse and a nice smooth finger roll from Sykes. Way off the mark and short from Allie Jensen. So one for 12 from three for Creighton. You have to keep shooting them, though, don't you? I mean, you have to kind of go with the girl that brung you? You do. That's their game. They shoot threes, and they believe they're going to fall at some point. Butler tries a three. That's too strong. Offensive rebound and traffic for Sykes. Undercut by Sammy Jensen. And a foul will be called on Sammy Jensen. So Allie's younger sister 
called for her first. Well, she was doing all she could, Bob. She had good rebounding position. She boxed out and she just went a little bit too strong, just kept on it. And Sykes draws a foul. That's the fifth team foul called against Creighton. Nice out of bounds underneath alley oop from Coffee to Tyson Thomas. This is a nice heads up play by Syracuse right there to go right over the top of the defense. When you can't turn your back on the ball. You've got to know where the ball is. The Jensen sisters trying to play catch, and a nice job by Sammy Jensen to keep the possession alive. Seven on the shot clock. Here's Ali Jensen. Long range three, hoisted up, and knocking it down is Fuyo. That's her third field goal. She's got eight, all eight of Creighton's points, and Syracuse's lead down to six. Well, that's what you do when you have experience in this tournament, like she does against St. John's last year. She wants a different outcome this year. Shot clock winding down now for the Cuse. Coffee realizes it and comes up way short. Long rebound to the corner. And it'll go over to Creighton. The only player making shots for Creighton right now is Mackenzie Fuyon. She's got great confidence with that three ball. It's a pretty shot. Fuyon shoots 43% from three, 47% overall. And she also comes into this tournament having made her last 24 consecutive field goals. Or free throws, pardon me. She has not missed a free throw since February 2nd. So if there's one player for Creighton, you have to think is pretty confident as a shooter right now, it's Fuyon. She's at the top of your screen. Well, I would imagine Syracuse is going to get at her on her a little harder, but there not that is. time. She doesn't need much, she doesn't need much space. Feed the hot hand. Syracuse 14, Mackenzie Fuyon 11. And the Cuse wants to call a timeout. Seems Quentin Hilfman wants to look at the scouting report, find 11 in blue. Well, you see how quickly that you can get yourself back in a game when you've got three-point shooters all over the floor, especially one that's heating up right now like Fuyon. You're never out of a ball game when you shoot the three, 36%, and you've got all, about all five players on the court that can shoot it. So right now, I'd imagine that Syracuse is going to come out a little bit tighter defensively from that huddle, especially on Mackenzie Fuyon. Third round action of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship continues today on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on tournament game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. You know, Syracuse has to get the, be able to get the ball inside to Kayla Alexander. That's where she really shines. She's going to have to start enforcing her will upon this Creighton defense inside. Alexander's turnaround is short, and Janning comes up with the rebound. Chance for Creighton to possibly tie on this trip. Here's Mackenzie Fuyon. Seems as if Brittany Sykes knew where to go <laughs> to find 11. Well, there's no question. They're going to have much more awareness of where Mackenzie is. Now they back off of her, and she travels. She passed up a wide open look from three again to try and dribble to the elbow and shuffled her feet. Six turnovers for the Blue Jays. And that's surprising because Coach Flannery told us yesterday, we're going to take the first good look on the floor because we might not get it again against this Syracuse defense. Line drive won't go for Sykes. And a rebound for Camphouse, who's back in the game now, playing with two fouls. No Creighton Blue Jay can hit a field goal other than Mackenzie Fuyon as Ali Jensen missed a wide open look. He post position for Alexander. Uses the glass a little too strong and knocked out of bounds by Carmen Tyson Thomas. Syracuse had a nine point lead, but Mackenzie Fuyon has cut it to three.
Bob Wachuz and Nell Fortner back at the NCAA Women's Championship in Knoxville. Syracuse, the seven seed, trying to shut down Mackenzie Fuyon. They've done a great job against her teammates, but they have not done a good job against 11 and blue. Well, sometimes you just have the hot hand, and today she is. And she's keeping her team in this ballgame. Crane has to have some other shooters step up and knock down some shots. Fuyon, the junior, has all 11 Creighton points. She's in double figures already for the 13th time this season, but her teammates need to step it up. Fuyon's three of four from three. Her teammates are 0 for 11, and this is an excellent three-point shooting team, so apparently those early first-round NCAA tournament jitters have hit all of the other Blue Jays. We'll see when they, when they can shake it off, but they have ridden Fuyon to this point. Well, it's really interesting to, if, you, if you remember Syracuse defense as the game started, they were not out beyond that three-point line. They are now in that defense. They're not trying to give, let anybody get heated up right now. Shot clock at two. It's going to be a shot clock violation. Unable to get the shot off was Carly Tritz. Really impressed with the, the pressure right there by that zone defense by Syracuse. Everybody was outside the three when they were guarding the ball, and that's what you've got to have to can't let Creighton heat up because you know they're about ready to heat up. At the left elbow, there's Kayla Alexander. First team all Big East, 12 double-doubles this season. Trying to catch it low in the post. And she finally gets a turnaround to go. Is that what we need to see more of from Syracuse and Alexander? Yes, because she can go over either shoulder Alexander can. She has taken the Syracuse team on her shoulders this year. She's got to step up big and score when she gets the ball in that paint, especially if she's going one-on-one. -on -one. Alyssa Camphouse will go to the free throw line as that foul is called on Alexander. This is your all-time leading scorer in Syracuse women's basketball history. She can go either way. What a beautiful left-handed soft little hook shot right there. And she can do that all day long. She's going one-on-one. -on -one. Quentin Hillsman made us laugh several times yesterday, but I think he made you laugh the hardest when he talked about Kayla Alexander and where he wants her on the floor at all times, not just some of the time, at all times. He was really fun to talk to, but he said no pick and pops for Kayla Alexander. Pro coaches tell him, pick and popper. No, you get down that block. You can pick, a, pick and pop when you're in the pros. He said Kayla Alexander should lead the nation in three-second violations, and he's got no problem with that. If she commits 90 turnovers, 65 of them are three-second violations, as Lacey Hall will go to the free throw line. He said that's fine. I tell her, don't leave the paint ever. If I pick and pop with her once, she'll never want to post up again. Ex All she'll want to do is shoot threes. You're right, because the big girls want to get out there and shoot threes. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is about that art. If you're six foot and above or six four like Kayla is, you want to shoot threes. Well, she's first all time in scoring and blocked shots at Syracuse as you saw second all time in rebounding. And none of that work is done outside the three point arc. That's all done in the paint, so. Well, I tell you what, and her best is yet to come. Her upside is phenomenal. She'll continue to get better. Crane has done a nice job today breaking this press, this extended press by Syracuse. They just can't get the, the three ball to drop. Good job by Fuyon, though, off of the Janning miss. So it has been all Mackenzie Fuyon, that time keeping the possession alive. And a fresh 30 for the Blue Jays. That's still no one other than Fuyon can make a field goal. She's got another. Feed the hot hand. Why not? Fourth three of the first half for Mackenzie Fuyon. I don't know about you, but this is the first time I've seen one player lead a team in scoring close to the five-minute mark left in the first half. Friendly bounce is there for Tyson Thomas. Fuyon has 14 of Creighton's 15. She's already tied a career high for most threes made in the game. Really hard to find any penetrating dribble lanes for Creighton with the zone defense extended as it is. Another long rebound. Here's Camp House inside. That's rejected by Tyson Thomas. Saved in the corner, though, by Janning. Rolling off the rim agonizingly for Carly Tritz, but another offensive rebound and a quick trigger, a bad shot from Jordan Garrison. But another long rebound. Creighton keeps it alive. Hall 
Powell tries to take it away and cannot. The NCAA Wrestling Championships conclude tonight in Des Moines. Catch the final eight at 8 Eastern on ESPN and also streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Find information on every championship at NCAA.com, the home for all 89 NCAA championships as Syracuse also picks up the foul out near midcourt. Jordan Garrison got the quick hook after that quick three. Now she's back on the Creighton bench. I can only imagine the frustration that Quentin Hillsman is going through right now with the amount of offensive rebounds that they are giving up to Creighton right now. Now a steal though and Sykes off the mark. The back tap and there's a second chance for Syracuse. Oh, lost her footing. It ends up though with Leary. She can't get it to go. It's tapped around and ends up with Brittany Sykes. And a reset for Syracuse. Didn't hit the rim though, so 15 on the shot clock. I've seen more teams this year really tipping the ball out for offensive rebounding opportunities than ever. I think it's something coaches are teaching more of. Get your hand on the ball, deflect it out. Give yourself a chance, your teammates a chance to get it. Good job playing center field by Brittany Sykes. Gets back and gets the steal. Still in all, Creighton. In spite of the fact that they have turned the ball over 10 times, has a 10 rebound advantage. Those long three ball rebounds that are, are falling into their hands or just getting out there long where their players are, are standing. There was a lid on the rim for everyone except Mackenzie Fuyan here in Knoxville. Tritz hits a three. Someone other than Mackenzie Fuyan for Creighton. Finally has a field goal, and the Blue Jays are within one. Well, you have to think they're going to start falling. If they're taking this many, you're going to start dropping some threes. And the tough part there is Syracuse can't give up that dribble penetration to have to help and leave the open shooter. Larry turns around. Rolls it off the rim. And it will go over to Creighton when we come back. The 10 seeded Blue Jays looking to take the lead here in Knoxville after this. The NCAA Women's Championship is brought to you by KFC. Come in today and taste why fresh is better. Here in Knoxville, we're collecting some of the best photos from around the women's tournament from athletes and fans. This was the Creighton viewing party. That was them waiting to find out if they made it to the tournament, and that was their reaction when they found out they were one of the last three at-large bids to get in. And Syracuse trying to model their brand-new kicks that they got for the tournament. 
Go to ESPNW.com slash tourney photos for more of the best athlete social photos throughout the tournament. Mel Fortner got out of the coaching game into the broadcasting side of the table just in time as Sykes draws the foul. She'll go to the free throw line just before the favorite color of seemingly every team in college sports became highlighter. And thank goodness Syracuse is not pulling a Notre Dame and making their entire uniform that color. It's just the sneakers. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. You got to put your sunglasses on to watch the game. Um, as bright as some of these uniforms are. And these shoes are bright today. Syracuse's men's program seems to set a new, uh, you know, cross a new line of awful each successive game that we see them bust out a new set of uniforms. It's like the organization of college sports somehow highlighter became the kids' favorite colors, and the programs have gone along. Well, you gotta, you gotta go with what the kids like, because they're the ones who wear it all the time and buy it all the time. Of course, we have to look at it all the time. Right. You know, we haven't seen Brittany Sykes get started yet. She's really a, a nice player for Syracuse. Has had a great freshman year and fantastic slasher to the basket. Just hadn't quite found it today yet, but I expect that to start coming on for that player one of the most infectious personalities there is out there. Another three goes down from Mackenzie Fuyong. A career high for Fuyong, shooting the three in the first half, and Creighton has the lead. Well, I'm surprised she's getting any kind of looks at all at the basket. No matter who else gets a look, that kid doesn't need a look. The first lead for the Blue Jays. won't go for Rachel Coffey. Offensive rebound, Sykes. Bounced one off the face of Alexander and right to Tyson Thomas. Does Gail Alexander get the assist there? Does Brittany Sykes? For those of you just joining us, welcome to Knoxville. Creighton, on the strength of Mackenzie Fuyon's three-point shooting, is in a one-point game with Syracuse. No one has been able to score for the Blue Jays. Outside of 11 in blue, it's been pretty balanced scoring for Syracuse, Bob Schusen and Nell Fortner, but the Qs has not, as you've been talking about throughout the first half, Nell, established that inside presence we expected. And, and with Kayla Alexander, you're able to have a strong inside presence. But she has to really start enforcing her will, asking for the ball and scoring. There is Alexander catching it low, and a nice job by Rachel Coffey. Fourth in the Big East in assists at four and a half a game, knowing to feed the post. Well, that's when you've just got to keep going inside. Creighton is a tough, strong-nosed defensive team, but they don't have the size and the height to deal with Kayla Alexander. Mackenzie Fuyon has the basketball. She's been the hot hand. This is Allie Jensen now for Creighton. But watch 11 in blue, flashing into the paint. She's got five threes here in the first half. Shot clock winding down. Three to shoot. Forcing one from the corner. Too strong from Sammy Jensen. Offensive rebound, Sarah Nelson. With a head fake, lost it out of bounds, off of her leg. So it goes over to Syracuse. But how about the shooting of Mackenzie Fuyon here in the first half? Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure she just, it's just one of those days for her. But it's its great for Creighton because she's been really the only thing they've had. Outside of Carly Tritz knocking one down. But here's the inside play of Kayla Alexander. See, she can go either side. We've seen her go left shoulder, right shoulder. They've got to keep putting it inside to her. About a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Tyson Thomas says, Why wait? But it's out of bounds off of Creighton, so it will stay with Syracuse with 19 to shoot. Now the officials get together, and Tyna Napier comes over, converses with Ryan Garland, and says it belongs to Creighton instead. As we take a look at our halftime uh, report like right. coming up, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual, Kevin Agandi, Carolyn Peck, and Carol Lawson. We'll have a look at the other games kicking off. The NCAA Women's Championship, Maryland already in action against Quinnipiac. And Oklahoma, a six seed now, Fortner. We're used to seeing Oklahoma as sometimes not only a, a one to a three seed, but a national championship threat. The Sooners, a middle of the road season for them as they've got a lead at halftime. Well, they've lost, she had a lot of injuries, Sherry Cole did this year at Oklahoma. And I tell you what, keep an eye on that game because Central Michigan, they've got some players. Talk about shooting the three ball. That team runs that dribble drive offense, and, and that's, that could be a really close ball game right there. 
The second half of our doubleheader coming up a little bit later on in the Oklahoma City region features obviously the number two seed Tennessee here on their home floor against Oral Roberts. And at some point, there's a very good chance that the Lady Vols will face the Lady Bears of Baylor and Brittany Griner as in this Oklahoma City region, Baylor is the number one seed. Down to five seconds to go in the first half. Nelson with a left hand plus the foul. A How chance for a three-point play for Sarah Nelson. How about that for a play to end the half when they have not been able to score all day inside? Creighton hasn't. And they finish the half going inside to Sarah Nelson. And she hits and gets the end one. That's got to give your team tremendous confidence going into halftime, finishing that way. Kia Leary called for the foul. Sarah Nelson, Nelson a first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference season, also an all-defensive selection. She has the highest assist to turnover ratio in the country for a post play. And with two and a half seconds to go in the first half, she's tied the game. Here's the baseball pass. It ends up with Leary, tries a three. That won't go. And on the strength of a terrific first half from Mackenzie Fouillon, Creighton has tied Syracuse at 24. It's time for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Let's go back to the Women's Championship Studios and check in with Kevin Nagan. Kevin? Bob, thank you. Welcome to the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Kevin Nagani, Carol Lawson, Carolyn Peck. Tie game so far. Syracuse's defense standing out. Yeah, it is. I mean, the pressure they extended there in the full court made Creighton bring it across the timeline. The biggest difference, I thought, for Syracuse on the defensive end is one, they were able to force some turnovers, nine in the first half. Somebody better, better find Mackenzie Fuyan and get on that girl <laughs> because she's got 17 points in the first half, five threes. So full court pressure good, affected them. Half-court defense, got to improve and got to know where Fuyan is. Four games early on, and let's take a look around what's going on. Oklahoma and Central Michigan. And, Carolyn, it's the big inside play of the Sooners. They were down by two points to Central Michigan, They're and then you see. Pull on the bench. Sherry Cole was getting physical down low, but it started off going inside to Nicole Griffin, and then when Joanne McFarland came into the ball game, she made her presence felt inside being that go-to player, and she knocked down two threes as well. The defense, Shireen Campbell finding Aaron Ellenberg. That will fall eventually, and then later on in the first, you see the drive here for Morgan Hook kicking it out to McFarland for three. The big girl can step outside, extend the defense. That's a good sign for Oklahoma. Extending it outside as well. Nicole Cornett making the three here. Wide open, why not? Oklahoma up 43 to 34, and that's where it stands right now at halftime. McFarland with 16 points and nine rebounds. Krista Bradford is a straight baller for Central Michigan, and so she has enough in her tank to help, but like Carolyn said, they've got to shore up their interior defense. They've got to find a way to slow down McFarland and Griffin. Central Michigan does if they want to pull the upset. From the Oklahoma City region to the Bridgeport region, St. Joe's taking on Vandy. 8-9 matchup in stores. Early in the first half, we are tied at 11 here, Carolyn, and Morgan Beatty finding Elon Brown in the corner, the long two. Elon Brown was pretty much the offense starting out for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was trying to settle and find their way. Remember, they're playing a whole bunch of young freshmen. Beatty's there to clean the glass. Vandy up by two there. Under five to go in the first half. Vandy up two. Jasmine Lister driving. Gets tripped up. Kendall Shaw picks it up. Misses, gets her own rebound, lays it in. On the glass has been key for Vanderbilt, creating those second chance opportunities. 23 total rebounds in the first half. And we got a good one, 8-9 matchup. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, it's going to be close, you see, in stores between Vandy and St. Joe's. 33-27, to 27. you mentioned the young team for Vandy. St. Joe's doing it, you know, without their star player who's, who's in foul trouble. Tatilla Van Grisman spent the majority of the first half on the bench, but it was Elza Gottfrieda that came in and was that offensive punch for St. Joseph. Oh, the big story we're watching this morning in College Park, Tricia Fabry and Quinnipiac, first NCAA tournament appearance taken on the fourth seed in Maryland. Quinnipiac down two. Lisa Lieback step back, drains the three, Karen. The three-point shot for Quinnipiac. Four threes in the first half. That really helped them extend their lead and give them a lot of confidence. That's Ellen Cannon right there. She oh. got three of those four threes. They were up by seven on the home turf of Maryland. Down low, inside, turn around. Yeah, Cameron Warner, the nice pass to Brittany McQuain. 
And Quinnipiac was up by nine, but here comes Maryland, Alyssa Thomas. Yeah, Quinnipiac controlled most of that first half, but towards the end, Alyssa Thomas got loose in transition a little bit, and Thomas and Haw Hawkins started to impose their will. Quinnipiac's going to have to get back, make Maryland play against their half-court deep. Wearing out the Bobcats, riding a 22-game winning streak coming into this game. Maryland up by four on their home court. Hey, the next set of games, this is what it's going to look like. UConn, the one seed, taking on Idaho at 1.30, set for tip-off. UCLA and Stetson, Michigan State, and Maris, and then Tennessee against Oral Roberts, the two seed, all on ESPN2. What stands out, guys, in your mind in this uh, second batch of games? Well, the only thing worse when you see Maris pop up or like, play against you is that they have a 12 next to their name as well. I mean, Brian Georges does a terrific job, and I think that's going to be a really good, really good game between the Red Foxes and the Spartans. Halftime continues. More action coming up. The Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. This halftime report is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be the official financial planning partner of the NCAA. Your mutual halftime report. More hoops tomorrow. Three to see Elena Deladon and Delaware taking on West Virginia at noon on ESPN2. Delaware, the sixth seed in the Bridgeport region. Deladon, second in the nation in scoring this season. Meanwhile, in the Norfolk bracket, number one, Notre Dame, led by Skyler Diggins, second leading scorer in program history. They take on UT Martin, the Skyhawks and then out of Oklahoma City. It's the defending champs, the one seed. That is Brittany Griner and Baylor headlining things against Prairie View. Let's go inside the numbers here, Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose here from Numbers Never Lie. Did you know that Brittany Griner and I are both six foot eight? But that's kind of where the comparison's in. Ah! See, she's more of an inside threat. Entering a tournament, she scored 482 points on post-ups this year. 41% more than any other player in the nation. Think twice, double teaming her isn't necessarily the answer. Griner has doubled on 20% of her post-ups, which is actually less than I expected, 
but nearly twice as much as any other player. And even when she's double, she makes almost 50% of her shots. Uh, I guess I have to admit, Brittany Griner is way better on defense than I ever was. Opponents only score 55 baskets on her in Baylor's first 33 games in 247 attempts. That's right. Opponents shoot only 22% from the field against Brittany Griner. So if you think you can beat Brittany Griner, remember, numbers never lie. Griner third in the country in scoring just under 24 points per game. How about this? Second in women's NCAA Division I history in scoring all time. All-time blocks leader in both the men's and women's side and the three-time Big 12 Player of the Year in action tomorrow against Prairie View. Hey, highlighting this stuff as well. This is pretty cool. Women's Basketball Championship are bloggers exclusively on ESPNW featuring players like Skylar Diggins and Elena Deladon. They take you inside their opinions on their way to New Orleans. Much more coming up after this. This halftime report is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be the official financial planning partner of the NCAA. Welcome back to the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Kevin Agati, Carol Lawson, Carolyn Peck, your game, the Syracuse Creighton at the half, but we have three other games in action. We're going to take a look at all of them. St. Joe's Vanderbilt right now in Storrs, Connecticut. Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke in the second half. Biggest lead of the game, up to 10. So Vandy has bolstered their lead. Well, Vandy with a 10-point lead. Central Michigan, Oklahoma in action in the second half. Clay Matvick, Swin Cash on the call. The Sooners up by six. The six-seed Sooners of Oklahoma turn it over to Central Michigan as the champions from the MAC giving the higher seed a rub here. It's a six-point game, the Chippewas. Throwing up a three from the corner, DeGiulio misses, and Oklahoma has the ball and the lead. 
on site Swin Cash and Clay Mantic. Welcome to Columbus, those who've just joined us. 16.36 to go. Ellenberg has her pocket picked by DiGiulio, and now it's tied up. And the possession arrow favors the Sooners. Let's take a look at this part of the bracket. Oklahoma and Central Michigan on the floor right now here at St. John Arena. Coming up later today, the three-seed UCLA and 14-seeded Stetson out of the Atlantic Sun. And we have a good one going on right now. And McFarlane at the baseline, passing it inside to Griffin. Let's see if she can go to work. Griffin tied up, stolen away by Crystal Bradford. One of the top players out of the MAC. She's already got 19 points. Schroll's jumper from close range, a little bit short. In transition, the Sooners turn it over. Bradford, two on one. Nice pass. Nice and bounce Schroll pass. the finish. There, you love the smart decision making by Bradford in transition. Draw a defender, nice little dump pass. Timeout. Oklahoma one time had a 10 point lead. It has been trimmed to four. A fun game in Columbus right now. Also updating you. How about Maryland on a 12 0 run against Quinnipiac, opening things up with a 10 point lead to start the second half. They are the four seed against Quinnipiac, making their first appearance. All right, Creighton, Syracuse, Kara. Uh, second half, what are you most looking forward to? Well, I think Creighton's got to handle Syracuse's b pressure better. Again, nine turnovers there in that first half. And for Syracuse, they locked everyone else up. But Mackenzie Fuyan is the one that got loose 17 points in that first half. So both teams have areas that they can improve. Tie ball game should be a good second half. Your thoughts on that second half here for Syracuse? Kayla Alexander giving the ball inside. She's been that dominant force for the Cubes. All right, we're going to keep you up to date, of course, because it looks like Maryland's now pulling yep. away slowly against Quinnipiac. And, Kara, <laughs> you mentioned it. It, it, they just have too much. They can run the floor and yeah. kind of wear out the Bobcats. You, know, you have to match Maryland's physicality and their strength for 40 minutes. And so Quinnipiac was able to do that for the first half, but it looks like Hawkins and Thomas are certain their will. Second half of your basketball game, Creighton and Syracuse in Knoxville. Bob was choosing on the call. We're going to be here all afternoon. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. And welcome back to the Women's Championship presented by Capital One here in Knoxville. Hit the first round of the Oklahoma City Regional. I am Bob Wachusen alongside Nell Fortner, former coach not only at Purdue, but also at Auburn. And for the women's national team, a gold medal winner. We are just underway here in the second half. Creighton and Syracuse tied at 24. It was the Mackenzie Fuyon show in the first half for Creighton. Kayla Alexander trying to get off to a quick start to begin the second half, and she comes up short. You see Creighton dropping down their point guard, Allie Jensen down there to double on Alexander. He's got to find that open shooter on the other side. Here's Fuyan. She's human. Comes up short. We haven't seen many misses today from her. That's just her second missed three-point shot. Traveling, Traveling called on Lacey Hall. Five turnovers for Syracuse. We'll take a look at our first half numbers. Both teams shooting poorly in the first half. Creighton, obviously, we know what they are, and they stay true to themselves in the first half. 24 threes. Was Syracuse with only 10 points in the paint true to what they do best? Well, they've got to put, they've got to continue getting points in the paint. The other thing, Bob, is they've got to dribble penetrate. They've got to get inside this Creighton defense and start creating for themselves a little bit. Shot clock at five. Turn around misses everything for Campout. Well, I like trying to put the pressure on Kayla Alexander defensively, but that's not their strength inside for Creighton. Alexander tied up, had to give it up to Fondren. Lacey Hall has her shot rejected by Fuyon. It was a pass. Fuyon gets the steal and finishes with the left hand. She's just having an All-American day right now. We're just watching a player that's really just in her groove. Sykes rises up and banks one home, an answer from the freshman. And the McDonald's All-American, Brittany Sykes. Well, Syracuse needs a lot more of that out of her. She's a very capable slasher, attacks the basket. That might open up her game a little bit. Marissa Janning leans in. She'll go to the free throw line. Janning averages 13 points a game, but she was quiet, as was everyone other than Mackenzie Fuyon in the first half for Creighton. 
Well, Gruyon, great anticipation on the on the pass. She gets the steal and then the strong finish on the other end. This is just Creighton really just playing with tremendous confidence. But their defense has done a great job shutting Syracuse, just, just making Syracuse go outside of what they normally want to do. Marissa Janning, the Missouri Valley Conference Freshman of the Year on the board for the first time. She came into today 19th in the country shooting the three. And in the first half, she was 0 of 7 from the field, 0 for 6 from three. But she scores at the free throw line. We'll see if that gets her going. has really kept Syracuse just at bay as far as getting any of that dribble penetration to the basket. Worked by Sykes. Two offensive rebounds, but couldn't hit either time. You know, Bob, this zone defense will really just make a, a team take its time and, and look for the best shot on the floor, but Creighton doing a good job of reversing the ball several times and there's Janning that's what you want out of Marissa Janning the freshman that's your leading scorer she is a three-point shooter a fist pump from the freshman and it's Creighton's largest lead finally Janning gets her first field goal all of a sudden you make a couple of free throws you get a friendly rim we'll see if that gets Marissa Janning on track starts rubbing off on everybody on the floor on your team Janning fouls Alexander and coming up at 1.30, more first round coverage here on ESPN2. The second game of our doubleheader features the Lady Balls taking on 15th seeded Oral Roberts here in the Oklahoma City region. And number one, UConn gets their tournament underway later on as well. Can anyone stop Baylor? Does UConn have the best chance of any of the one seeds to beat them? Okay, this is my answer to your question. No, end of discussion. There it is. There you go. <laughs> Traveling called on Alexander. Creighton looking for their first NCAA tournament win since 1994. And Syracuse in the tournament for the fifth time. They have never won an NCAA tournament game. And a backdoor cut. Carly Tritz extends the Creighton lead. And Syracuse wants a timeout. Well, great pass by Mackenzie Fuyan. Just finding Tritz behind the zone. Just does a great job. A 7-0 run for Creighton. Carly Tritz with her second field goal. And the Blue Jays have turned the tables on the orange. Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2013 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award.
Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2013 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award. Papa Shoes and Nell Fortner back here in Knoxville. Kayla Alexander catches it deep. And out of the timeout, Syracuse Kayla goes Alexander. right to their bread and butter. Their all-time leading scorer and first-team All-Big East post player to try and break the Creighton momentum. When you see they kind of they they went to her kind of in a high low, which takes away some help side. So right there, she's going one-on-one -on -one with Elisa Camphouse, and that's a tough matchup matchup for Camphouse. Traveling call as Camphouse picked up her pivot foot. Creighton turns it over. The Blue Jays still with a five-point lead here in Knoxville. Miss ESPN's NBA action Monday night. LeBron James and the Heat want to continue their historic streak. If they keep it going tomorrow, then Monday night, they'll be looking for number 27 in a row when they take on the Magic. NBA Special Edition presented by State Farm. Heat Magic, Monday at 7 on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. Have you ever seen, A, a team as hot as the Heat have been this season, and B, a player like LeBron James perform at the level that he has this season. We've seen great performances by some other players like Kobe and Michael, but LeBron's in his prime, and he's having at it right now. That's by Alexander. Tapped around and run down at midcourt by Rachel Coffey. Again, deep post position for Alexander and a chance for a three-point play. Now that's what has to happen for Syracuse every Fashion time down, down the floor. Pound that ball Over inside, five, make Creighton guard and you, and let number your big girl go to work down there. Out. That's your all biggies, post player, your all-time leading Alexander scorer. Line, you've got to you've got to pound the ball inside right there. Force Creighton to guard you. Alyssa Camphouse called for her third foul. And Alyssa's Jim Flannery, at least for now, will leave her in the game. Remember, Camphouse picked up her first two fouls in the first three minutes of the game and went to the bench. So it has taken her this long to pick up her third, which might be an indication of how little Syracuse has gone to Alexander at times as Tritt's an out-of-control scoop that ends up with Alexander. Right now, Syracuse extended that press, really putting the pressure on Creighton. Alexander picks up another chance at the free throw line as Camphouse commits foul number four. We see the defensive intensity is just picked up on the Syracuse end coming out of that timeout. And you've got to do that. You've got to, you've got to put the pressure on. The winner of our game advances Alexander Monday Bob. night to take on the winner of game number two in our doubleheader here at Thompson Bowling Arena when the Lady Balls will be on their home floor against the three-point shooters of Oral Roberts. There's now wholesale substitutions in the game for Creighton. 
that's where Creighton's depth really helps them be able to get, give some players a little rest. Because right now, Syracuse, if they use their speed and quickness, they can really create some problems for Creighton. Two quick fouls to start the game for Camp House. Two quick fouls to start the second half as well. He's now on the bench with four. Fresh off the bench, the kid Atiko. Can't hit from the baseline, but hustled from Sarah Nelson. Keeps it with the Blue Jays. Well, she is tough. She is, Sarah Nelson is just one tough player. She's a tremendous defender inside. Has great basketball IQ. Finding open players on the floor. Pass from Janney to Akinatiko, and she banks it home. Akinatiko has really come on strong as the season's progressed. The last five, six games really added to the depth of this Creighton team. See Syracuse goes back to Kayla Alexander. She has 12 points in the game. She scored the last seven for Syracuse, and there she is trying to get post position again. Instead, it's coffee wide open at the elbow. No good. Sykes has the rebound and a reset for Syracuse. A fresh 30. An offensive rebounding is something Syracuse has done well all year. So we're seeing in the second half them getting several more second shot uh, chance opportunities. Alexander working with a little more purpose, a little more sense of urgency this half. And she travels. The crowd behind us is the Creighton section. And they have been screaming for a three-second call against Alexander for about the last five straight possessions. And now they give the officials the little sarcastic cheer as they get the traveling call. Akinatiko, high, low pass, and Nelson able to finish. Creighton takes the punch from Syracuse, but they hold on to the lead up by four. Nice job of just being patient within your offense, reversing the ball and, and picking the zone apart a little bit there by Creighton. Coffee for three. That was just about an air ball. Here comes Carly Tritz. Finds Nelson in transition. He's got it. Well, they're feeling it right now, Bob. Creighton is just playing with tremendous confidence. The bench has come in and given them great, great strength off that bench. You know, just as soon as you think Kayla Alexander is going to get it going, Creighton toughens up that interior defense. They forced Sykes into a tough reverse attempt. She hit the underside of the rim. Good hands here to knock it out of bounds by Lacey Hall. Cornelia Fondren will come back on for the use, replacing Rachel Coffey. Syracuse needs one of those players to step up and just give them that energy. You know, you're right here in the NCAA tournament. The game is close at hand. You just got to have that energy to get over the hump right now and believe in yourself. That's what Creighton seems to be doing. Carly Tritz for three. Kept alive on the offensive glass again by Nelson. But stepping on the end line was Marissa Janet. Sarah Nelson again, keeping the ball alive. You know, she's always in there around that basketball, whether it's on the offensive or the defensive end, with the rebounds. 13th Creighton turnover, but not one there that Jim Flannery is going to mind, as that was a hustle play along the baseline to try and get an extra possession. Bodies fly all over the place. No foul call. It leaves Fondren alone. That's in and out. Tap out of bounds, and it goes to Creighton. Tyson Thomas couldn't come up with the offensive rebound. You notice Creighton switching on ball screens between their one, two, threes, and fours, and that's not allowing Syracuse to turn the corner and get deeper penetration into the paint. Turns it over. 14 Creighton turnovers. Lacey Hall in transition. Fouled by Sarah Nelson. So Lacey Hall will shoot free throws when we come back. But Sarah Nelson starting to wake up in the post. Well, Sarah Nelson just tough inside. She just likes to get it done. But look at the nice feed and the assist for the basket.
back in studio with Kara Lawson and Carolyn Peck. Oklahoma's inside play was the story in the first half. The outside play is working here, Carolyn. Karen Ellenberg, three for three from the three-point line in the second half. Sooners up by six with just over eight minutes to go. Checking other scores, 8-9 matchup. St. Joe's down by six to Vandy. Quinnipiac, Maryland now a 16-point advantage. Back to Bob and Nell in Knoxville. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. There's Megan Simmons on the left-hand side of that group of Lady Vols. Bopping along to the music, the co-SEC Player of the Year. Up on the big screen here and getting a cheer from the Tennessee fans that are already on hand, getting ready for game two of our doubleheader at Thompson Bowling Arena. As the Lady Vols will take on Oral Roberts for the right to play on Monday night against the winner of Creighton Syracuse going on right now. And a surprising effort from the Creighton Blue Jays out rebounding Syracuse by double digits. Seven to shoot for the Orange. Long range three off the mark from Tyson Thomas. Tapped around and now Sykes with an offensive rebound. Bondren left alone but passes it up. Tyson Thomas penetrates and banks it home. And that's where Syracuse like really needs to do Tyson a lot Thomas. more of that penetrating. Attack this defense and get inside of it. Try to create, get, get yourself to the free throw line or get some easy high percentage shots. It's now Fortner on Bob Wachusen. Creighton still out rebounding Syracuse to this point by 10. Well, that's very surprising, right? You know, that, that stat. But sometimes it just happens that way. And a lot of those are offensive rebounds, those long missed threes. Creighton has 14 offensive rebounds against the eighth best overall rebounding team in the country. But now Jordan Garrison called for the foul. We've seen the last two possessions. Syracuse putting the ball on the floor, really going hard to the hole. He lays your hall right there. Draws the foul, gets yourself to the free throw line, and that's where you have to start, you know, inching your way back into, you know, into your game right there. Find find a way to shoot the ball, whether it's at the free throw line or off penetration. Allie Jensen comes back on after Garrison picks up her second. And quickly up off the bench is Carly Tritz again. She's set to check in. Paul knocks down a couple of free throws. Here comes Tritz. You can see that heavy knee brace that she wears on her right knee. This is a player that at one point was preseason player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference, but her teammates have done a terrific job today on the glass. And Syracuse being out-rebounded by nine, normally at 44.3 rebounds per game. The eighth best rebounding team in America. You know, and, and I, I'm not so sure how many teams Brighton has out-rebounded this year. That's not their strong point. But there is... first half already matching her career high with 22 points and another Syracuse turnover All right. Mackenzie Fuyan just really just had an outstanding day but I love how Creighton they are looking for her they know how to find her get it in the hot hand Nice high-low pass. The reverse by Tritz. Craig doing a great job of getting interior passing inside this uh, Syracuse zone. But I love their patience. They're finding the right pass to make. All for three. No good. Tapped around. Tritz with a hustle play. Shoved to the deck. And that's a foul on Syracuse. Only their second oh, team foul here in the second half. But Carly Tritz continues to play through the pain. And inspire her teammates. That's something we learned about her yesterday at Shooter. I was going to say she's such, such an inspirational player to her teammates because she's in pain every day. She can't practice every day, but she brings everything she's got to the game for. An arthritic condition in her right knee. It's bone on bone, and it's a condition that degenerated from her days in high school. Backdoor cut. Fuyon rushed it. She had more time. Then she realized. Tyson Thomas the other way. Blocking foul, no. Not a blocking foul called. An offensive foul called. And it's Tritz that draws the charge. Well, you just love seeing a player just come into a game. She, this is a player that was preseason 
Conference Player of the Year, but look at the backside of really, really hurting his zone defense with divers coming from the weak side. And right here, the charge by Tritz. She's half the player, Bob, that she has been in her first two years at Creighton. This year, really half the player, but still able to contribute. Don't leave Guyon. It's to Syracuse instead of three on the way. And it goes for Marissa Chanik. Her second three. It's the largest lead for Creighton up to double figures. But that's what happens with three-point shooting teams. They finally find their rhythm if you're going to continually give them open looks. So right now, you've got to shut that space down between you and the shooter if you're Syracuse. You can't give up the open look. The NCAA Wrestling Championships conclude tonight in Des Moines. Catch the final at 8 Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. Find information on every championship at NCAA.com, the home for all 89 NCAA championships. All right, you're the coach. Now you're in that Syracuse huddle. You live with the 2-3 zone. That's Syracuse tradition for the men's and women's programs. At some point, you have to come out of it. And if, if Jim Beheim, we talked about this with Quentin Hillsman yesterday, he would never come out of it. I mean, Jim Beheim, no matter what you're doing, we're going to play our 2-3 zone. But would Quentin Hillsman push a button and play some man-to-man? -man? Well, they play 19%. They'll play zone, They'll play man. So maybe we'll see a little bit right now. If I'm, play, I'm coming out in the zone, my next possession down the floor, don't let this team, Creighton, get get any hotter from the three. Coffee on the drive, no good. Chance for Creighton to extend their lead, let's see. Will Syracuse simply drop back into that 2-3 zone? It looks like they will. Well, they're gonna rely on it, they've played it all year long, played very few possessions of man, and they're gonna stay with it. That three comes up short for Janik. Sykes may have grazed that shot as she jumped out and closed the distance. I think she did. So a much better job of closing out on the shooter. You've got to do that on every Creighton player on the floor. Alexander inside. Plus one for Kayla Alexander. And then go to your bread and butter because that's your bread and butter right there. Kayla Alexander. She's the Big East active leader in double doubles. Seven more double doubles than any player that's active right now in the Big East. She's at the line when we come back. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Capital One Cup, recognizing the best in college sports. Check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. 
When you come to Knoxville, we highly recommend the low-cal lunch available at Calhoun's. We've got some good barbecue over there. And there's a chance that some of our ESPN crew, after the games are over today, might swing by for a sample. Just a little bit. Bob Bichusen, Nell Fortner, and the rest of our crew here in Knoxville. Tennessee Oral Roberts, the second game of our doubleheader. First things first, seven and a half minutes to go between Creighton and Syracuse. Another wide open backdoor cut. Sarah Nelson banks it home. She now has not. That's about four times, four or five times that Creighton has killed the weak side of the Syracuse zone on diving a forward from the backside. Nice job. That three misses everything for Brianna Butler. Offensive rebound, a second try, and a chance for a three-point play for Kayla Alexander again. Well, Kayla Alexander being very aggressive on the offensive boards right there. And that's what you've got to do. And maybe this will give Syracuse some energy. They've got to have some energy right now. They're, this is seven minutes and 15 seconds left in the NCAA tournament. You've got to bring it right now. points, seven rebounds for Kayla Alexander after Carly Tritz picked up her second. Much ever, since Alyssa, well, ever since Alyssa Camphouse picked up her fourth foul, too, it seems Syracuse has been much more aggressive getting the ball to Kayla Alexander. It has. Much different second half for Kayla Alexander. Good hands by Fondren. Off the steal. Kicks it out of bounds. Well, it was a great steal by Cornelia Fondren. Just didn't have... Tremendous confidence going to the basket right there. She's a ball handler. Get in there and finish that play. Creighton's got to be very careful with the basketball. They can't turn it over consecutively to Syracuse. They've got to take good care of the ball. And a bad foul by Fondren. In the backcourt, Tana Napier rings her up. And for Syracuse, they had taken the shot clock all the way down to 17. Creighton didn't even have the ball in the front court yet, so that was a great chance for Syracuse to create a haphazard possession for the Blue Jays, and she commits the foul. That's where I think the women's game needs that backcourt 10-second clock. A three goes down for Sarah Nelson. She's in double figures for the 20th time this season. And she's doing it. She's doing it on both ends of the floor for Creighton all day long. She's brought it on both ends. Hall can't answer from three. Sykes saves it. Lacey Hall fumbles it right to Alexander, but through her hands. Taken away by Fuya. Syracuse really extending that 2 3 zone, getting out on the shooters, but you got to know where Fuyan is. That time she can't hit, Sykes the rebound in traffic. And a chance for the McDonald's All American to push it the other way. She'll try, can't finish. Offensive rebound, Alexander fouled on the floor by Sarah Nelson. 18 fouls, so it'll be a one and one. Sarah Nelson right here, just, she goes down to the block, but then she works her way back up to the top of the key. She wants the ball up there. Nobody comes to her right now. If you're Syracuse, you cannot let any one of the five Creighton players shoot an open three. They're feeling it right now. The ball game is dwindling down. You've got to go contest every shot. That was Sarah Nelson's third foul. Camp House on the bench with four. As Nelson has gone over 1,000 points for her career in this game. 21 points and nine rebounds now for Kayla Alexander, and it's a seven-point game. Five and a half minutes to go. I like the, the more aggressive extension of this zone by Syracuse. They've got to create energy for themselves. They've got to turn that into turnovers and rebounds on the defensive end. You see Creighton really continuing to, to rock cutters in the zone. Syracuse has got to be aware of them. And he gives it up. Father Tritz will have to put it up. Instead off to Janning. Beats the timer. And it's just a little bit too strong. But a long rebound. And a fresh shot clock for Creighton. Another long rebound off a of missed three. Well, sometimes those just fall into your lap. You know, when you're shooting a lot of threes, you have to came right back to her. They Jan. leave Nelson alone. And she hits a three. This 
might be an opportunity for Quinn to change up his defense a little bit right now because you've just got too many shots falling for Creighton. You've got to know where shooters are, and we'll see if they come out of this timeout, maybe in a little bit of a man defense. Right now, Sarah Nelson feels it. If you've got your five players stepping out behind the arc, knocking down threes, you've got to know where she is and everybody else on this Creighton team. Kenzie Fuyan with a career high scoring and three point shooting with six made threes. Janning missed her first seven, but she's made two of her last three. Nelson with a couple of threes to get into double figures. Is this good offensive execution from Creighton, or have you noticed a lack of effort from Syracuse at times on the defensive end? You know, I think I see a lack of effort on the defensive end from Syracuse on that weak side. You've got too many cutters getting behind the back line of the defense. They've got to know. You've got to open up, see those cutters happen, and at least shade to them a little bit. You've got to have that energy to play defense and stop that. A little stutter step dribble and a nice finish by Rachel Coffey, and that allows Syracuse to pick up with some pressure again. Let's see if they go man-to-man -man now, and it looks like they will for the first time. It's man-to-man -man defense, it looks like, for Syracuse. I think it's a great call by Quinn Hillsman. You've got to change it up. Don't let Creighton get comfortable picking your zone apart and knocking down uncontested threes. And they get the steal. Coffee the other way. In transition, Tyson Thomas hits a three. And some life from the orange as they pick up full court again. Well, sometimes when you just make those little, those changes within your defense, it just gives you energy. And a man defense forces energy because you've got to stay with your man. Pushing foul called on Alexander. Only the fifth team foul against Syracuse. But now the officials will gather. And it is indeed a foul called against Kayla Alexander. Her second, then we will step aside. Syracuse makes... The defensive adjustment. Will it be enough to get the Cuse over the top? And comes back down and Carmen Tyson Thomas with the three. Shoes and Nell Fortner back here in Knoxville. Look at Jim Flannery, the head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays. Three minutes and 47 seconds away from pulling off what you'd have to call at least a mild upset over Syracuse in advancing the second round. Syracuse just came out of the 2 3 zone and went man to man. That's why I love working with coaches. So now Coach Fortner, now the chess match continues. Coach Flannery in that last huddle. What's the adjustment for Creighton? Well, right now he had to adjust to talk about man offense because they haven't had to run a man offensive play all game long, and that'll mess up your rhythm right now. 
From the corner, Fuyo off the mark. Hustle in the corner, and it's out off Syracuse. Rachel Coffey couldn't save it. Tried to bounce it off of Sarah Nelson. Should we be surprised that Sarah Nelson was involved in a hustle play? This kid's been all over the floor today. Excellent call by Ed Sedlaski right on top of the play. In and out from three. And Coffey the rebound. Crane still got, got a couple good looks right there for three. Just couldn't drop them. A foul called. Will it be continuation? They wave off the basket. It's Fuyan called for the block. So it's a one and one now. As That's team foul number nine against Creighton. I really like the aggression by Alaysia Hall. She gets herself to the free throw line again. We just saw that a few plays ago. But Syracuse has the ability to penetrate against this Creighton man defense. And they've got to take advantage of that right now to either score or get to that free throw line. All comes up way short on the one-on-one -on -one attempt. She had to put her contact lens back in. It got knocked loose after the collision. And then after putting her contact lens back in, steps up, comes up way short on the free throw attempt. A lot of putting, a lot of screening. Syracuse just played Villanova in the Big East tournament and beat them and guarded a little bit of that same kind of motion offense that Creighton's trying to run right now. Another Creighton turnover, though. Alexander in the lane, finishes. It's a one-possession game, and the Blue Jays have looked much more discombobulated on offense against the man-to-man -man than they did ever against the zone today. Well, they have Jim Flannery wants a timeout as a result. Well, they have. It's hard to play 35 minutes of zone offense, and then all of a sudden you're getting some people up in you, you know, in that man defense. They, and, and Syracuse can do that. They can get up in you and stay with you quickness-wise. But right now they're going to have to kind of calm down. Again, talk about, look, we've got a great motion offense. Let's just settle down and run that. we got to set screens. We've got to have our cutters. You gotta dive, you gotta slip some screens. So we'll see if Creighton runs a little bit better offense right now coming out of the timeout. Can Creighton hold on, or will it be orange against orange on Monday night? As Oral Roberts in Tennessee, one of the four games we will feature as the first round continues. Game number two of our early doubleheaders here on ESPN2. UConn, UCLA, and Michigan State will also begin their women's championships. The second half of our doubleheader features the Lady Vols on their home floor. Danik tied up another turnover. 18 Creighton turnovers now. Sykes gives it up. Tyson Thomas gets trapped. Coffey right back down to Alexander. Rolls off the rim. And the rebound to Marissa Janning, and she draws the foul as Carmen Tyson Thomas commits her second. Team foul number six against Syracuse, so they still have one more foul to give. But they are now out as Creighton will shoot free throws the rest of the way. For the pressure right now by Syracuse, uh, I like the full court man. Right now you got Kayla Alexander up here involved in it. Syracuse have, have dialed up the notch energy-wise in these last four minutes. And they go to Sarah Nelson against Rick Kayla Alexander to break the pressure. Syracuse forces 16, 17 turnovers a game, and they get 20 points off of them. Right now, Creighton has 17 turnovers, and Syracuse puts 21 points off of them, so they're doing their job. Again, deep post position for Alexander. No good. A fight for it. Held ball, and it belongs to Creighton. Now, right now, Kayla Alexander has to finish that shot. She's right there at the glass. She's taller, she's above on her release of the defender. She's got to finish that shot. Uh, Jim Flannery wants another timeout. It seems as if he is happy with the five he has on the floor. And now he's got these timeouts at the end of the game to give them maybe segmented rests during the last couple of minutes. You're exactly right. He, he, he didn't have to use his timeouts as the game was getting to this point because his team was playing so well. So he's a happy man right now having those in his pocket. But right now his team has to execute. They cannot turn the ball over and continue to give Syracuse points off of turnovers. Quick scores. You know, you got a minute 32 left in the game. You've got to draw that. You've got to use that clock right now if you're Creighton. And then score at the end of the shot clock. Both teams
teams with timeouts remaining, although Syracuse only has one. Both teams out of fouls to give. Creighton hasn't scored in the last five minutes. It's a 7-0 Syracuse run that has made it a three-point game with 90 seconds to go. They've only gotten a couple of good looks offensively against the Syracuse man defense. Channing inside, swatted by Sykes, but a foul call. Well, it was a great play. I love the play, the Creighton run. You back screen your guard up on top of the arc right here. Sarah Nelson comes up, back screens. Janning gets wide open for the layup, but the block comes and Sykes comes over the top. Sometimes you, sometimes you get the block on that. But these are big free throws for Marissa Janning right now. She gets the roll in 80% free throw shoot. Now this is a Creighton team who got to this point pretty much last year against St. John's. They were closing the gap instead of having the lead last year. But they've been in a close NCAA game just like this a year ago. One minute to go. Tyson Thomas to check that all on the penetration, draws the foul. So Lacey Hall will go to the free throw line. This will now be the double bonus. Team foul number 10 against the Blue Jays. Lacey Hall is, is really giving McKenzie Futon a lot of problems with her dribble penetration. Every time she's putting it on the floor, she's getting herself to the free throw line. Only the first foul called against Puyon. for Hall. Syracuse down by three, 55 seconds to go. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Knoxville, a timeout called by Creighton as they are trying to hang on by their fingernails. Three-point lead for the Blue Jays over Syracuse, 46.9 seconds to go. Bob Oshusa, Nell Fortner here at Thompson Bowling Arena. The first of our two, and what a start to the women's tournament. Vanderbilt and St. Joe's go right down to the wire. Vandy holds on. Only moments to go, and a close one as Oklahoma is trying to begin their tournament with a win. And this game has been very close throughout. Creighton led by double figures with five minutes remaining. Syracuse has come back, Nell, to make it a one-possession game. And for those just joining us, Syracuse played 2-3 zone for the first 37 minutes of the game. With three minutes to go, they went man-to-man, -man, and that changed things. It did. It, it really shut Creighton's offense down. They're having to regroup, get into a flow of their motion offense where they set a lot of screens, good hard cuts to the basket. They've got to take good care of the basketball, not turn it over to Syracuse. Tend to shoot for Creighton. Down to the deck goes Tritz. She turns it over. So Syracuse will have it back in a one possession game. And that's what you don't want to have happen. You want to at least get a shot on the basket before Syracuse gets the ball back. One timeout left for Syracuse. They'll call it here as all lined up in the corner with a wide open look at three and instead Quentin Hillsman calls timeout. Welcome even more new viewers who are joining us here at Tennessee and Knoxville. Game one of our doubleheader coming right down to the wire. Bob Wishes and Nell Fortner. It's a three-point game, 28.7 seconds to go. Creighton took the lead late in the first half. We were tied at halftime. Throughout the second half, Creighton has gone back and forth between being up a couple of possessions or being up by double figures. With Nell Fortner, Syracuse has it down to a one-possession game with 28.7 seconds remaining. Well, Creighton has shot the three ball so well. Mackenzie Fuyon just has had her day at the three-point line right now. And Syracuse, though, going to the man defense against Creighton in the last three and a half minutes of this game has really turned the tide and gotten them back in the ball game. You know, right now, this is the time coaches live for, to come out of this huddle and create a play that's going to win a game or tie the game. But Creighton has had their way from the three-point line. It took them a while to heat up. 
But once they did, everybody was getting in on the action. One through five players on this Creighton team. Sarah Nelson, normally down there on the block, lighting it up from the three. And it was that three-point shooting that took Syracuse from the two-three zone to man-to-man and put Creighton into an offensive drought, so they're trying to hold on. Here's Syracuse after the timeout, down by three. Tyson Thomas on a drive, finishes. It's a one-point game. Really good defense by Creighton not to foul right there on the shot. Give up the two, don't give up the three. And Tyson Thomas committing the foul in the backcourt. That's her third in the team's eight. You know, that's just some, some coaching strategy by Quentin Hillsman. Let's go get the two, turn around and press them, see if we can get a quick steal or make them hit some free throws. But right now, stop that shot clock. It's a one-point ball game, and there's still going to be time on the clock to come back down and get a three if we need it, or possibly it's a two. Bouillon, an 86% free throw shooter. So the good news for Syracuse, they were in the perfect position in terms of fouling because they're still in the one and one for two fouls. Having said that, they fouled the wrong free throw shooter as Fuyan continues a terrific day with a pair at the line. Will Syracuse try a three now to tie the game with 13 seconds to go? They're taking their time. They're going to have to put a three up. They're going to have to put a three up. Down to six seconds to go. Hall leans in for three. No good. That'll do it. A foul called, and the officials say game over. And Creighton holds on for the win. Just great defensive play by Creighton. Didn't give up anything easy. Syracuse got no easy looks for a three-point shot right there. And then they came down with the rebound. The officials will go to the monitor to see if there should have been some time still on the clock after the miss. Quentin Hillsman is saying he was trying to call timeout and it wasn't recognized. Let's take a look. Just under a second to go, perhaps, when a foul should have been called. You can see Tana Napier going to her whistle. Just after she went to her whistle, she signaled game over. But now they're over at the monitor to double check. Well, if there's any time on the clock, it's, it's I don't even know if it's a second. Let's take a look at the replay that Tyna Napier is going to be watching with audio as well. We'll listen for the buzzer. It'll be a very small, minimal amount of, of time on the clock, and Creighton's going to be shooting free throws because Tyna Napier called the foul. Yeah, clearly, Sarah Nelson has possession. The foul would have been called on Kayla Alexander, so it's just about academic, even if they put a few tenths back up on the clock. And as we take another look to see how much time is gone, there's the whistle. And maybe just a few tenths of a second belong on the clock. They're going to put .3 seconds up, which really makes it academic because Syracuse can't even attempt to catch and shoot should they rebound a missed free throw. Exactly. There, there, there won't be enough time to get the ball down the floor for any shot attempt. But all Creighton has to do really right now is just knock down one of these free throws. Three tenths of a second or less, and you can't do anything but tap the ball anyway. Right. So the game is over. Creighton's going to win. So what a performance by the Creighton Blue Jays. And did Quentin Hillsman wait a little bit too long to come out of that 2-3 zone? Well, you have to wonder if they would have come out of it a little early, definitely, Bob, because they it definitely affected Creighton. But it, it got Syracuse back in the game. It cut the gap. Between, you know, and, and, and that's where you, you go back as a coach and you reevaluate this ball game heading into next season. It'll be a hard take to watch. So it will be Creighton advancing to Monday night. Their first win in the NCAA tournament since 1994, and the Syracuse Orange still winless in program history in the NCAA tournament. Our Capital One player of the game, Mackenzie Fuyon, and why not? Sets a career high, not only in total points, but with six threes as well. Well, she kept her team in the game in the first half. She came, was knocking down shots. She was at one point the only scorer on the board for Creighton.
So once again, our final score, Creighton with a five-point win, 61-56 to over Syracuse. They advance to Monday night, and they will await the winner of the second game of our doubleheader. Stay tuned for that one. Coming up here in Knoxville, it will be Oral Roberts taking on the Lady Vols of Tennessee. Other regional action on the way as well. Right now back to our Women's Championship Studios. We'll come back to Knoxville. Right now, let's check in with Kevin Nagani. Kevin?